Hey, hello and welcome everyone and thank you for joining our Tool U virtual demo series. My name is Cody Mork and I'm a sales engineer with our Iowa branch. We here at Rhino Toolhouse understand and respect the seriousness of the coronavirus and want you to understand that we are taking every precaution necessary to help curb the spread of this virus. Also prior to moving on, I wanted to mention that there's a chat feature located within the Zoom window that you can use to enter any questions that you may have along the way. Uh, please just type those out in there and we will address those at the end of the presentation in a Q&A session. Also, uh, for this demo, you'll want to go to your view options and choose a side-by-side -side mode because I will be running a tool to go ahead and uh, demonstrate the process. So for those of you who may be new to Rhino Toolhouse, uh, we are a collection of the best distributors throughout the United States. We cover over half of the U.S. and have a team of 65 sales engineers and 10 application engineers throughout that footprint. Here at Rhino Toolhouse, we have found that many of our customers face a daily challenge of how to properly manage your tooling and calibration records. Many customers are either using a manual data entry system, which requires technicians to manually input torque data, which often leads to errors and in even worse situations, falsified inf information. Others may have no system at all, which leads to multiple safety and quality issues with their products. In order to combat these scenarios, Crane Electronics developed a software package called OMS, which stands for Opta Management System. Opta Management System is a system torque auditing software package, which features a fully encompassing range of functions to provide a complete company-wide solution to all torque related activities. OMS utilizes a single server, single SQL server database to store information which includes tool and joint management, tool repair and maintenance history, quality torque auditing and production data collection, R&D data storage, including torque time angle trace analysis plus transducer and readout calibrations. Calibration and scheduled recalibration dates for production tools and auditing devices are managed effectively while also maintaining an efficient and traceable record, but also providing the user with an effective management tool to view upcoming work. OMS allows the user to track the location of these tools by assigning them to specific processes, uh, which you may refer to as joints or applications. It also offers the facility to certify tool and automatically collect torque and angle data readings through the crane audit devices. OMS can also connect via, to a tool controller via open protocol and compare the DC tool readings to the master calibration device. So now what I'm gonna do here quickly is log into the software and share a separate screen. So bear with me just one moment. Okay. So now what you are viewing is the Crane Opta Management software. Uh, the screen that we're on now is the initial startup or the login screen. Now in order to log in, you have two options for your users. The first option is a manual process where an operator can simply select their user from a drop-down list and key in their passcode. The other option is to use a barcode ID or in many instances like an RFID tag uh, where they can use their uh, badge readers, so on and so forth. Uh, many of the facilities now use an RFID tag system, so we can incorporate that here as well. So I'm gonna log in as myself, which I am uh, an administrator, so I have access to everything within the software. Quickly, I'm gonna highlight just what each of these icons is. Around the outer perimeter, what you will notice are the navigation icons, your exit, your logout, uh, minimize, and then just our general setup or settings for uh, the global settings of the software itself. Now working around the C in a counterclockwise function, uh, I'll mention each one of these and go into them briefly. What we have here now is our tool database record. 
So if I click on that, this is where we can maintain all of our tool list, as well as a location, and as well as a service record. So you can see I have quite a few tools in here that are past uh, their service due date. Uh, also various locations, the maximum torque, uh, manufacturer as well. Now any time you see these column headings, uh, you have a few other options. You can filter based on a search criteria. So if you're looking for a specific serial number or tool model number, you can do that. Uh, or you can also choose columns. So you can add and remove columns or sort uh, accordingly. So within this now, if I were just to go ahead and add a tool record, I'll just highlight a few things here. Within the tool detail, you'll notice a C number. A C number is what Crane refers to as a control number uh, or what you would call maybe an asset number. This is a unique identifier that uh, has to be unique from any other tool in your system. This is used to maintain and track against this specific tool. Then we have our tool manufacturer. You can select a tool manufacturer from a drop down list. And once you do so, the tool models underneath that manufacturer automatically populate. Uh, moving on, you have uh, different categories for each tool type. This is important because whichever category you choose is the measurement type that the crane device will use. So to speak a little bit more in depth on that, a peak is gonna grab our highest peak torque seen within a rundown. Click dip is used for the first click uh, when testing click wrenches. And then pulse is used for uh, testing pneumatic pulse tools, which all three of those use a different algorithm, so it's important that you select the correct one when setting your tool up. Power is just a simply a reference field. What you can do is come in here and put in whether it's a manual tool, a DC electric, maybe a battery, maybe pneumatic. Torque units, uh, as well as our torque min and max. Uh, and then one other thing to note is our transducerized. If this is a transducerized tool, it allows us to connect to that DC tool controller and grab the results from that controller as well and compare them to our master transducer. One other item to look into here is our tool service. Uh, anywhere within here, we can now do our tool servicing and maintain our service records. So what we can do is come in here and create new tool service records, whether it's internal or external, and then we can report on that as well. So if we wanna look at any one of these, I can view this and I can see the amount of uh, parts that have gone into it as well as labor hours. I'm gonna back out of tools, take us back to our main menu. Now we'll move over to applications. Applications is where we're gonna maintain all of our torque data for a specific application. So within here as well, if we go to add, you can see a few different fields here. The main fields uh, that we're looking for here again is a, a join index field. Again, that's a unique identifier, uh, maybe an application name. Uh, where is that located out on your assembly line? And then what is our pass fail criteria? So here you'll see I have a lower specification limit and an upper specification limit and a target limit. So in order for this to pass when doing our tool test, uh, we have to fall within that given criteria. We can also toggle these back and forth the percentage of limits. So you can set it up that way as well. Also, uh, secondary values. If you're using a DC tool and you wanna capture the angle data, you can input that here as well. So now that we've had a tool set up, and an application setup, we can now link these together to create a traceable record for that torque tool on that specific application on our line. So what I will do is go ahead and show you that process. So I'll click on this here, and you'll see I have a variety of different applications linked to different tools. If I were to come in here now, what you'll see is I can grab my tool that I'd set up from my list, I can apply that tool to a specific application, and then I can set up my certification or my validation criteria. I can now set up intervals, typically with a certification that is a more intense test. Uh, maybe it's a 31 piece study that you're gonna do every quarter. Or a validation may be uh, a simple audit that a 
an operator is going to walk over to a bench, click the wrench three times, and just validate that it is performing uh, where it needs to be. Once we have that now, we now have that tool linked and we can do a tool test. So in order to do a tool test, there's a few different ways of doing so. We can right click and add a filter to search for that tool. We can manually select one from our list. Or what I'll demonstrate here today is a simpler and easier process. I'm gonna click on my new certification. Now what I'm gonna do is barcode my tool and I'm gonna scan that tool so I don't have any manual input into my system. So now if you were to look at the camera, what you can see here is I have a, a DC tool with a barcode label on here. I'm gonna scan that using my Pro Club scanner and what it's gonna do is bring up that tool. Now if you look back over to the software, you'll see now that this is a DC tool tied together with a DC controller. So I could input my IP address and my port number in order to retain the readings from our controller and compare those to my master. So I'll go ahead and proceed here. The next thing you see here is our input calibration factor. Since this is a DC tool, I can put in that calibration factor from my DC controller and the crane software will automatically calculate a new calibration factor that you can then go back to your DC controller and input to change the cal of the tool. So now what we're seeing here is it's connect connecting to both my DC tool controller as well as my crane device. So here I have a torque star readout that just acts as a switch to the software. And I have a rotary transducer that allows me to measure the torque output of this tool in line on the application. So I'm just going to go ahead and proceed. I'm going to start taking some uh, torque readings. And as you'll see here on the screen, on the left side of the screen, you'll notice the master. The master is the transducer, this blue device and line transducer, which is grabbing the output of the tool at the drive shaft. Where on the right hand side, that is actually the torque value of the DC, oh, excuse me, sorry about that, of the DC tool from the controller. So now you can compare both these and you can notice here on the screen, I have a pass criteria because I was in side of my specification limits of nine to 11 Newton meters and both the tool and master fell within that criteria. Also, you can see our percent differences here as well. So you can go back through and look at all that. Also, you can view all your SPC data here as well. So if you were passing or failing based on a specific uh, CP or CPK, you could track and record that here as well. So now to move on, all I have to do is click my OK and these results will record to my database. Now once we're here, we now have an option also to enter any notes that we'd want to do. So we still have all of our, our torque tool data. Uh, but if I wanted to insert some sort of note, um, you know, maybe the tool was found out of calibration uh, and I have to adjust it or, or whatever that may be, or it was on the wrong application. Uh, it's just a free text field that we can enter here. So once again, I'm gonna just hit my green and proceed on. Now what we have the ability to do here as well is automatically generate or print a report. So with that that I just did, I could go ahead and auto print a label to a label printer with a barcode on there. So next time I come back out to calibrate that tool, I can see when it's due, uh, that it passed on this date, maybe the user that did it, and then have a barcode I can quickly and easily scan to uh, proceed with the next calibration. So now I've showed you um, how to go about setting up a tool, an application, link those two together in order to do a tool certification, validation, or in some instances uh, referred to as a calibration. Now moving on in the software package, um, we also can maintain our records for our audit devices. So as you can see here in my database, I have a list of all my crane uh, devices that I used for auditing. So I have rotary transducers, stationary transducers, IQ wrench, uh, 
the various different devices that Crane offers. And I can also maintain days to calibration and verification. You can see some of my records are quite old here and uh, <laughs> are exceeded their calibration date. So you'll also notice that they are red. So there is a calendar function that you can assign specific days till due date uh, to highlight so you have more of a visual indication here as well. The next icon going around the C is a quick test. A quick test is simply that. If going into a quick test, you have three modes. You have your pulse, your peak, and your click. Within a quick test, all it is, it's that same type of screen that you've seen before, but we are not recording any data. We're just simply running a tool down in line with the software to verify the torque output. The next icon here at six o'clock position is audit tools on applications. This is where we would take a static wrench uh, and set up our static routes. So we'd be moving the fasteners with this one. We wouldn't be measuring the tool dynamically in, in real time. Uh, we'd be going out with a separate device and recording that and then coming back and uploading that data, uh, whether it's wirelessly or cabled to the software. The next icon here is reporting. Now, obviously, you know, the reports, uh, you have all this information, all this data that we put into the system. We need to be able to report on that. And anything we input into the system, we can report on, uh, whether it's a free text field or an extra information field. Any and all data put in can be reported on. There are a few canned reports that come with the software. Uh, however, there is a, um, a customized reporting engine as well with this software that you can go in and create and design your own reports as well as Excel um, reports as well. If you want to export it to Excel, you have that functionality. So now I've shown you kind of the overview of what the Crane OMS software can do and its capability. I'm just going to do one more quick tool certification test uh, just to show you maybe what it'd look like for your operators out on the floor. So I am going to log out as myself and I'm going to log in to a limited user that only has the option to do the tool certification process. So what you'll see here now, uh, I've lost a lot of icons. I can only log out, possibly exit, I can do a quick test, or I can do my tool certification. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in here, and what I have set up now is a click wrench or an overcheck tool to go ahead and just verify that each one of these fasteners have been tightened. So I'll grab my wrench and scan that. It's gonna ask me what transducer I'd like to use. In this case, it's this one here. Now it's establishing communication. Now I'm ready to go. What you'll see here, I did a fail there. The reason I did a quick fail on that one, uh, I prematurely let off the wrench just to show when we have a failed criteria, we do have the functionality to remove that reading. However, we can take that functionality away as well. I'm going to continue through uh, failing this one so you can see what it will look like at the end of a failed certification. So now you see I've completed it. I have completed my five readings. Now what I am going to do is proceed. And it's going to say, hey, I failed. I was outside of specification limits. So now I'd say, hey, maybe my click wrench was out of calibration. I needed to adjust it. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and verify that I want to do another calibration process. So it'll then it'll ask me if I want to retain this result. Again, all these can be done automatically. So it would automatically skip this step, save that result, and proceed on. So now what it will bring you up to is do you wish to retry? So now it can force me, yes, I need to retry, I need to ver validate that this tool is indeed to calibration. Now I can go through again. And I am good. 
I will save that record. And move on. All right. So in summary, today we reviewed Crane OMS, which allows us to properly maintain tool and calibration schedules in an effective and efficient manner while providing reportability on all data entered into the system. So now at this time, what I'd like to do is go ahead and open it up to questions. So if you have those questions uh, available, I will bring open chat and address them as they come in. And we'll give it about 15 or 20 more seconds uh, yep. if, if nobody has questions. But uh, looks like uh, here's one. How does the click dip work? So the click dip works. Um, what it's looking for is that first click. So as we are ramping up on our, our torque scale, that click wrench is going to click and it's going to see a peak in torque. And then it will drop down X percentage. When the software sees that drop in torque, it then records that first peak instead of that second peak. Because usually an operator is going to pull past that first click and there'll be a higher peak torque after that. Give it a few more seconds here for any other questions. Uh, another question here, do I need a wrench loader to calibrate a click wrench using the click dip? No, you do not. You do not need a loader. You can do that manually and that's how I was doing it here in my process. As you can see, I was pulling it by hand. Um, so yes. And there, there was another question, um, kind of off, off topic, but uh, somebody asked if, if this video was shareable. Um, it is. All of these videos, all the demos that we do are uploaded to the Rhino Toolhouse YouTube page. Um, so if you did happen to miss any of the previous demos, um, you could certainly find them there. And those are shareable. Um, it looks like another question came in. Yep. Can I use the click dip function to train operators how to use a click wrench? Yes. So this software has a graphing functionality in it as well, which we like to utilize for training operators. So what you typically would like to do is you give an operator a click wrench. Uh, you tell them what it's set at. You ask them to pull that while having this side by side. And what it will do is tell them what that wrench clicked at. So in this instance, uh, 10 newton meters. I can now go into that graphing function and I can say, okay, where did you stop pulling torque? And they'll say, well, 10 newton meters. Well, within the graphing function, if I were to open that, I can then show them actually where they did stop, which in reality is probably, you know, a couple newton meters higher than that 10 newton meters. So you can show them that first click dip point which was 10, and then you can show them where they pulled past with might be 12 or 15 uh, based on the joint condition or uh, your application. Excellent. Well, I think uh, I don't see any other questions, Steve. Do you see anything else coming in? We don't, but if, if you do uh, have any questions after this, um, feel free to reach out to any one of our sales engineers, uh, Cody in particular. Um, he'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, thank you for all your questions. And 
I'd like to conclude here by inviting you all to join us tomorrow as we send our Tool U virtual series down to Concord, North Carolina. Uh, tomorrow we'll be demonstrating a great new ergonomic solution uh, called BioServo Iron Hand, and that starts at 10 a.m. Eastern and 9 a.m. Central. Thank you all for joining and have a great rest of your day.